Hi guys, I'm Crayblog. Welcome to Crayblog Presents. Welcome to Crayblog's Presents again, where we explore the dark side of humanity and also the wonder of the world. Uh, a little intro about my channel. I'm a true crime and also mythology enthusiast, so I created this channel to share and inform you about this topic. Especially for true crime, I hope to raise awareness about the crime issues surrounding us. Perhaps it's a way to learn from the past and to prevent future tragedies. I hope you join me to explore this journey and let's make the world a safer place. Today, we are going to talk about a case that haunts Korean greatly in the 70s. This whole case is very complicated and hurt not one, but more than a dozen victims when this happened. Not only that, it took an unexpected turn and revealed a twist after 30 years. Some may say that his act is a mimicry of the Zodiac Killer that happened in Northern California. But to me, I think this is far more gruesome and horrible. But first, let us take a look on the place of this happened. When we talk about Korea, we can relate to the scenic place. Beautiful people, rich culture, and delicious food. Blackpink, to any want, BTS, kimchi are the words that we normally would think of. And today we will be focusing on a small village in South Korea called Hwa Seung. It all began on September 15, 1986, in a small town called Hwa Seung, previously Tang Yuk. A 71-year-old woman, Lee Wan Nim, was walking home after visiting her daughter, just like usual. However, she was never seen again after that day. Four days later, on September 19, her body was found in a pasture. She was murdered. With police investigations, she was presumably sexually assaulted by the killer, then strangled to death. Fast forward to one month later, on October 20th the same year, another victim died under the similar presumptions. Park Hyung Suk was walking home and disappeared after getting off the bus from Songtan. She was 25 years old when she was killed, and the body was found after 3 days, which is on 23rd October in the canal. The police investigations concluded that she was likely been sexually assaulted and then strangled to death, which is resembled to the first incident that occurred. The incident caused fear and concern among the residents, leading to extra precautions when walking alone. The media, the residents, everyone, pressures authorities to find the killers, but the case remained unsolved. But this was all just the beginning. In mid-December, two women were brutally murdered in separate date using a similar method. On December 12, a housewife was strangled and gagged with her stocking in front of her house. On December 14, another woman was murdered after getting off the bus while returning from meeting a prospective marriage partner. Her hands were tied. She was strangled and violated with an umbrella. The killing occurred just two days apart, causing panic and fear in the community. You can see the killer is not letting any opportunity slip out of his hands. He has become more and more insatiable. The killing method has become more gruesome as well and cruel. It's like he's constantly on a hunt of prey in every alley in Korea. Later on, there is the bus driver claimed that he witnessed a suspicious looking man getting on the bus 
after one of the murdered on 7 September 1988 and gave a detailed description of the suspect. What he described was, this man has a thin frame and is mid-twenties, standing between 165 to 170 cm tall, with short swarthy hair, no double eyelid, a sharp nose and soft hands. Even there's another survivor that escaped from this attempted murder, Lee Gun Run, also provided a description of the killer similar to what the bus driver described. She said that he was skinny and had a low voice. Throughout the five years period, the police has invested a huge amount of manpower and resources more than any other case they have handled in tracking down this serial killer. There was a significant amount of evidence and also DNA samples has collected and kept caught. They even interviewed over 21,000 individuals and collected around 3,000 DNA samples. This investigation team was composed of over 10,000 police officers. They worked tirelessly to catch this killer. However, despite their best effort, there's no avail. This has become a cold case, sitting in the record room for more than 30 years. However, on September 2019, police decided to reopen this case and having a re-investigations. And in October 2019, the police had a huge breakthrough. Thirty years after a string of murders in Pasong City, the South Korean police have announced that they now have a strong lead in the case. The investigation team held a press briefing on Thursday, revealing details related to the country's worst serial murder case. They said they have initially identified a prime suspect after the National Forensic Service found that DNA collected from the underwear of one of the victims matched the DNA of the suspect. The police say they have also found a DNA match for two other victims of the serial killing. So far, we have been informed that the DNA from the suspect matches in three of the murder cases and the investigation is currently underway. The police are yet to find any new evidence in the other cases. You might be asking, who is the suspect? The suspect is one of the inmates, Lee Jun Jae. So, who is this Lee Jun Jae? And what had he done? Lee Jun Jae was an inmate in Busan Detention Center who was already in prison for more than 25 years and was sentenced to death for rape and murder of his sister-in-law who was 18 years old in 1994. However, later he was reduced to life imprisonment by the Supreme Court. We will continue to conduct DNA assessments with the National Forensic Service and will thoroughly investigate the connection between the prime suspect and the serial murders through detailed analysis of the investigation record and the related persons involved. The suspect, who is in his 50s, is currently in prison for a similar crime. He has denied the allegations from the first investigation. But even if the suspect turns out to be the murderer in the Hwasong case, he will not be punished for those crimes as the statute of limitations expired in April 2006. The crime received a lot of attention when it was made into the movie Memories of Murder in 2003. More than 2 million police officers, a record number of a single case were mobilized to investigate the murders. And over 20,000 people were investigated for those murders, a figure that hasn't been broken since. Won Jong-an, Arirang News. And finally, in October 2019, Lee Chun-chae admitted to the crime he committed. This includes nine unsolved crimes that police consider it as cold cases and another four crimes without police record, which means police was not even acknowledged that it happened. Total up, there were 13 rape and murder crimes that he committed. 
He was amazed by the police took this long to find out, despite his lack of effort to hide it. Besides, he also revealed the motives of committing these crimes, that he just wanted to relieve his sexual desire. And there's a twist in this whole case. Actually, this serial murder not only brought suffering to the victims and the families, but also to one particular man. To be exact, up to the eight murdered, which involved a 14 years old victim rape and murder in her home, had the police wrongly convicted an innocent 22 years old repairment spent his 20 years in jail. The innocent man is Yong Song Yo, and he was falsely accused of the eight murder in 1988. He was arrested and forced to confess to the crime after being subjected to brutal interrogation tactics. Despite maintaining his innocence, he was sentenced to life in prison and spent over 20 years behind the bar before being released in 2009. Although he was out of prison, but that doesn't mean that his name was clear. He was still burdened with a falsely crime, not until 2019 Lee Chun-jae confessions. The Korean government gave Yoon's an apologies and compensated for his wrongful imprisonment, but the damage had already been done. He lost over two decades of his life and suffered immense emotional trauma after that. There are a few movie adaptions according to this true crimes. The first one is Memories of Murders. Uh, is filmed by the well-known Parasite directors. Second, Confessions of Murders. This is a more direct adaptation, adaptations of the Hua Xiong serial killer. And the last one is Gap Dong. This one is more to a fictionalized account of Hua Xiong serial killer. If you're interested, you may go and watch it. Thank you for watching. I understand this is a very difficult story to sit through and I would like to take a moment to express my sympathy to the victims and family. No one deserves to be the victims of crime. Uh, to all my audience, let's stay safe and be more vigilant to your surrounding. Run away if necessary. So, before I end this video, stay safe, be good, and be happy. If you like my video, please subscribe and like. Give me a like.